Hi everyone, this video will talk about managing the programming process. The guidelines and best practices listed in this video apply to the project manager and not necessarily to the systems analyst. The learning objective for this video is as follows. After watching, students should be familiar with practices for managing the programming process. The first key task in managing the programming process is assigning the right programmers to do the coding of the new system. First, try to minimize the number of programmers. The more programmers you have involved, the more coordination and communication channels are open. Projects requiring a large team should be broken into a series of independent smaller parts to reduce the coordination costs. Try to match programming tasks with programmer capabilities and strengths. And when skills are deficient, apply mentoring and training. Here are some best practices for coordinating activities during the programming process. First, hold weekly, hopefully brief, meetings and create and follow standards. These two tips will help keep everyone on the same page and make coordination easier. Another best practice is to organize programmers' work areas. Usually programmers shouldn't code the software on the production server or the area where the system will actually be implemented. A development area is where the actual coding happens. Testing is a separate place where active testing occurs, but not with true organizational valid data. Only after the software has been thoroughly tested should it be installed in the production area. Another good tip is to implement change control mechanisms. This means that if you have a large project that you have multiple programmers working on, you don't want them to override each other's work. So you need to make sure that the code can be checked out and checked in by a programmer as they make edits on it. You should also use a program log to monitor program changes. This means being able to see who made changes, at what time they made those changes, and what those changes were. One popular tool for managing code, including change control and program logs, is GitHub. You can find out more about control mechanisms and program logs by visiting the Wikipedia page linked here. Here's some classic project management mistakes that occur during the programming process that you should try to avoid. First, use research-oriented development. That means if you're using new state-of-the-art technology, lengthen the planned time it will take to implement it. New technologies have less documentation, and so there can be more surprises or misunderstandings when you're trying to implement it. A second classic mistake to avoid is using low-cost personnel to save time and money. Experienced programmers can complete as much as five to eight times as much code in the same amount of time as new programmers, but they often only cost about double the rate of entry-level programmers to employ. If you do decide to use a significant number of entry-level personnel, lengthen the planned amount of time that it will take to complete the project. A third mistake to avoid is lack of code control. You may think that you can rely on your responsible programmers to coordinate with each other on when they will be editing the code, but it's best if you can use a source code library to keep the programmers from changing the same code at the same time, such as those discussed on the previous slide. The fourth classic mistake is inadequate testing. You need to always allow sufficient time for formal testing of your system. If you can avoid these classic mistakes, your programming process should go very smoothly.